You may be thinking of taking a solo trip to Walt Disney World but are unsure what it may be like and also how to maximise your experience there. I am a frequent solo traveller to the Disney parks with Walt Disney World being my favourite place on earth. So today I'm going to let you know just what it's like to be a solo traveller at Disney World and also let you know my top tips and trips to help you get the most out of your solo trip. I've previously done a video all about what it's like to be a solo traveller to Disney and I cover a range of topics so do check that out and I've also done a video all about top tips for solo travellers to Disneyland Paris. So if that is something you're considering, make sure you see that one too. My name is Sophie from Most Magical Guides and I make planning videos packed full of tips and advice all about Disney World and Disneyland Paris. I also do vlogs of my own trips, many of them solo trips. So if you do like that type of content, hit the subscribe button down below. Disney World is an absolutely incredible destination for solo travellers. And if you've never done a solo trip before, it is one of the best places you can do your first ever trip alone. Here you have four theme parks, two water parks, an entertainment and shopping district, multiple hotels, amazing dining, lots of entertainment. There is so much to see, do and experience. There is not any time to get bored or most importantly to get lonely. Plus if you stay at a Disney resort, you can stay in the Disney bubble because there is literally everything you could ever need on site. You never ever have to even leave Disney. So if you're just looking to be able to go somewhere, stay in one location and have all your transportation, shopping, dining, experiences, entertainment, all in one place, Disney World is the place to head to. Because there is so much to see and do at Disney World, typically people do spend a longer time there. If you're coming from abroad, people tend to spend a minimum of seven days, maybe 10 days, 14 days, or even longer. If you have never done a solo trip before, this could feel a bit intimidating because it is kind of a long time to be away on your own. However, I would say fully dive into the experience. It can be tempting to do a short trip just to kind of dip your toe in and see if you like solo trips, but you could miss out on a lot. And if you are planning to only go to Disney one time, make sure you go for as long as you can so that you can get the full Disney World experience. Whenever people contact me about doing solo trips, the number one question I get is are you not lonely or do you not wish you were there with other people and the great answer is no with so many shows parades rides character meet and greets amazing dining shopping there's just so much to do that your days are jam packed so you never actually get much time to think about being on your own if there are moments where you have a bit of downtime such as when you're waiting in queues this is the perfect time to contact your friends and family with free wi-fi all around Walt Disney World it is super easy to keep in contact if if you are wanting to keep queue time down to a minimum so that you can't feel bored or lonely then there are a few options you have at Disney World. One is single rider queues. Now this is perfect for solo travellers because it means you get to go on those big rides with a shorter queue time. Now Disney World doesn't have a lot of single rider queues but the ones that they do have definitely utilise. For the rides that don't have single rider queues you might want to consider purchasing Genie Plus. This is available for up to 40 rides around the Disney park you purchase it per day so what you might want to do is go and visit the park see how busy they are and then decide to purchase it if you need it GE plus enables you to join the shorter lightning lane queue so this can help you cut down your wait times which is fantastic news because not only do you get to fit more into the day you're also reducing that time where you're kind of just standing around and thinking about being on your own what I would suggest is because you are most likely going to be visiting the parks for multiple days is to perhaps go to Magic Kingdom one day and see what the crowds are like then you might decide later in your trip when you go back to Magic Kingdom you might utilize Genie Plus this will help you keep the costs down but still be able to maximize your time in Disney World another option is to purchase individual lightning lanes now this is where it gets a bit confusing because not all of the rides at Disney World are included in Genie Plus and the most popular rides you actually can purchase lightning lane passes for but they are a separate price if there is a ride that you are desperate to go on and you can't miss out on but it has very very long queues and it does have the option of an individual lightning lane this can be a good option one of the benefits of being a solo traveler is although it can be expensive where you are only paying for yourself
yourself, it can cut the cost down. Whereas if you are traveling in a big group, it can be very expensive to buy Genie Plus or individual lightning lanes. One tip I would suggest is if you're wanting to go on Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind or Tron, which both have individual lightning lanes available to purchase, instead I would first try and get the virtual queue for these. The virtual queue is free, which is fantastic. And you can apply via the My Disney Experience app at 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. each day. Trying to get a place in the virtual queue will save you money. It also means you're not stood in queues for long periods of time. You will just be told the rough estimate time of when you need to come back and then the app will notify you when actually your boarding group can go on the ride. However, if you are unsuccessful, you do know individual lightning lanes are your backup option. And if these rides cannot be missed, then definitely try that. Something I love as a solo traveler to Disney World is Photo Pass. Photo Pass enables you to get incredible photographs taken by professional Disney photographers in the parks and also your ride photographs is part of a package. Now if you are coming from the UK, Photo Pass is automatically included in your tickets which is such a huge benefit. What I love is at Disney World there are photographers literally everywhere. There are so many iconic locations to get photos in and I got literally hundreds of photos during the two weeks I was at Disney World last year. What's really fun about these is you get those full length shots that you can't necessarily get on your own and they also have fun backgrounds they have magic shots where they will cgi in effect and also the photographers guide you on how to pose what to do so i really really liked that interactive element so if you are looking for these iconic super fun professional photographs at disney world then definitely consider utilizing photo pass meeting characters in the disney parks is a big part of any trip but i do know that adults can sometimes feel uncomfortable if they are on their own particularly having to stand in queues around people that maybe have kids the good news is meet and greets are not just for families or children they are absolutely for adults too what i would say is everyone is in the disney bubble and they're having a fantastic time so people tend to not notice you so never feel that there's anything you can't do or you have to miss out on if you want to go meet characters absolutely do that and no one's going to mind some of my favorite things to do when i meet the characters is to discuss maybe their outfit if they're in a special costume themed to maybe the park they're in or talk about the film or tv show they've been in different characters they've interacted with and that's really fun jump off point for you to have a conversation however if you are feeling a bit nervous about being in a queue on your own a really good option is character dining meals here not only are you getting to meet lots of characters at once you're also getting a meal so it's a really really great combination and it takes that awkwardness away because you are specifically in a setting where you are there to meet characters whilst we're on the subject of dining this is something that comes up a lot as well that people are a bit nervous about being in restaurants on their own the good news is as i said lots of people are just in the disney bubble so they're really not looking at you so if you do want to go and try some table service meals i would absolutely recommend it disney world has hundreds of incredible restaurants with lots of different cuisines and experiences so definitely don't miss out on this however if you don't want to be in a restaurant for a long period of time the really good option is quick service dining this is similar to fast food locations where you order go up to the counter collect the food yourself and seat yourself this is the cheapest and quickest way to dine and can be a really good option for solo travelers just wanting to grab food on the go if you do want to go to some table service meals then i would highly recommend getting reservations these restaurants do book up very very quickly so make sure you get in there on the 60 days in advance of your trip so that you could get the reservations you want as a solo traveler it can sometimes be hard when you're trying to get reservations for just one person so what i would suggest instead is to look for tables for two people you're going to be sat at a table for two people anyway so it doesn't make any difference and you can also modify the booking once you have made it so if you are struggling to get that reservation for just one absolutely do it for two people and you should have more luck and if there are any reservations you haven't managed to get never fear there is a fantastic website called mouse dining on here you can set up alerts so anytime a reservation comes up for the restaurant you want you will be notified using mouse dining i've always managed to get all the reservations i've ever wanted so definitely use this something that i really appreciated is whenever i dined at table service restaurants on my own the servers 
teachers always went above and beyond to make me feel comfortable. They were so friendly and welcoming and would have great conversations with you. So it actually really enhances your experience because you're getting these really nice Disney moments of magic between you and the cast members. When it comes to food at Disney World, the portions are massive. Because of this, sometimes you may find snacks are a great way to have a lighter meal. Something I enjoy is if I want a little breakfast, I will get a Mickey pretzel. It is delicious, it's savory, it's soft, it's warm, it's everything you could need. And it's around $8, so it's a really affordable option for breakfast. You will often see meals that are described as family style dining. So here you will be brought platters of food, which typically everyone would share. If you are on your own, of course, you are only gonna have food for yourself. And they do tend to bring out a slightly smaller portion, but it still will be quite a lot of food. I know this was something that worried me because I was like, oh, but there's so much food waste. But it is really handy to know that at Disney World, they actually take food waste into a system that they have created, which turns food waste into energy. So it helps power the parks, which I think is incredible. Something I love the most about doing a solo trip is the absolute freedom it gives you. You can set the budget, you can set the schedule, and you can do anything you've ever wanted to whilst at Disney World. Something that I really enjoy and you might want to consider is doing a special event, tour, or experience. If you've been to Disney before and you're wanting to try something new, or you're wanting to get the deep dive full Disney experience, these are such a good option. I've done fun things such as build a lightsaber at Sabi's workshop, I've been to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party, I also did the Keys to the Kingdom tour where you go backstage at Magic Kingdom, which was literally incredible. These can be a really great way to enhance your trip. And if you're visiting with other people, sometimes it might just be something they're not interested in, or maybe they don't have the budget for, so you may have to skip over them. But when you are solo, you have the ability to do anything you like, which is fantastic. One of the big factors to consider when doing a solo trip is just where you're going to stay. The great thing about Disney World is it has over 40 resorts on site, which is fantastic. And they have benefits such as early entry into the parks. Deluxe resorts also have certain nights of the week where you get late entry into the parks and they have free transportation. One of the biggest benefits to being at a Disney resort is you get to stay in that Disney bubble and for the Disney magic the whole time. But something I particularly enjoy is they feel very, very safe. I love staying on site. It's my preferred thing to do. And I've actually only ever stayed on site when I've done solo trips because I've just loved the fact that you feel very safe. It's easy to get around and you have the convenience of everything being in one location. If you are staying on site at Disney, the value resorts are a really great option. These are the most budget friendly and they have absolutely everything you need. They are comfortable, safe, and they have the free transportation. Typically, value resorts, it will just be buses, whereas if you stay at moderate or deluxe resorts, they may also have other options, such as the Skyliner or monorail or even boats. However, if you stay at Art of Animation or Pop Century, these are both hotels that are Skyliner resorts. So even though they are value resorts, you have that extra transportation. The Skyliner is my absolute favorite, and it is absolutely worth paying a little bit extra to stay there if you are gonna be using Disney transportation, because you can get to Epcot and Hollywood Studios via the Skyliner. One of the reasons I recommend value resorts for solo travelers is that in the US it is typical that when you purchase a hotel room, you purchase the room itself. Whereas in Europe, we tend to pay per person. So because of this in the US, when you are a solo traveler, you take on the full cost. If you were to stay with someone else, it would instantly half the amount you would pay for the hotel room. So because of this, value resorts are a really, really good option because they're gonna be the most affordable affordable. Deluxe resorts at Disney are beautiful. They have extra amenities and they are the closest to the parks. However, they do cost significantly more. So if you are going to be spending a lot of time in the parks, it might not be worth the extra cost. Something I do to help keep costs down is to book when there is an offer on. The past couple of years, the offer for the UK has been the free Disney dining credits, where depending on the resort you stay in and the room type you have, you get a set amount of dollars that is given to you on a gift card to spend on dining. This helps out so much. And if you're a solo traveler, you are very lucky because the gift card is for the room. So if you are one person, you get to keep that all to yourself. As well as the Disney dining gift card, you also get a merchandise gift card. So you get lots of dollars to spend, which helps you keep the costs down, which is fantastic. If you are gonna be doing a solo trip and you are concerned about safety at the hotel, then something you could do is book a preferred room. Preferred rooms are closest to the 
lobby so it means you're not having to walk around these very very large resorts on your own which can be super handy if you're going to be leaving early in the morning or coming back late at night and it just means you're not going to be having to walk very far on your own these rooms do cost a little bit more but if safety is something that is a big concern to you it could be a good option to fork out that little bit of money and then have that peace of mind i personally have never stayed in a preferred room i've always just booked standard rooms at disney world and i've always had really great experiences i've left my room very early in the morning and come back very late at night and never had any issues whatsoever and that's something i really like about disney world as a solo traveler because it does feel very very safe if you don't want to stay in a disney resort you can stay at a few hotels that are still on site at disney world these are known as good neighbor hotels and they do have some benefits such as early entry and free transportation now it is worth noting that sometimes the free transportation will just take you to disney springs where you will then have to transfer onto a bus to get to the parks so do look up what is on offer if you do want to stay at one of these good neighbor hotels one of the reasons solo travelers like these hotels is because they are slightly cheaper but still on site at disney world but as i say the benefits are slightly different so do make sure you look into it before booking sometimes the cheapest option can actually be to stay off site in orlando itself with orlando being such a popular tourist destination there are hundreds of hotels to choose from if you are looking for an area close to disney world then flamingo crossing and lake buena vista are the best options for you if you are going to stay off site then be sure to check out how you're going to get to the parks some hotels do offer a shuttle but the timings aren't always great so do look into that also check if there are things like resort fees because sometimes once you factor everything in it's not much difference in price to actually stay on site at disney world so do make sure you do the comparison so you know you're getting the best deal i've actually done a video all about the hidden costs of staying in an off-site hotel so you know what to look out for so i'll put that in the description down below as i mentioned when it comes to transportation when you stay off-site it is worth noting sometimes you may have to rely on taxis ubers or lifts so do factor in that cost because as i say once you start thinking about all of these extra costs it may be cheaper just to stay at disney itself if you are thinking of staying off-site i would absolutely recommend looking up websites like tripadvisor so you can get reviews written by people who have actually stayed there so you can see what the hotel is like how it is for solo travelers and what the area around the hotel is like to check that it's safe there are also a number of solo traveler facebook groups for disney world specifically so you could always go on there and ask for recommendations of hotels off-site that people have enjoyed staying in and have felt safe in as a solo traveler but i would say if you do have the budget and the opportunity definitely stay on site if you can there is nothing like being in that disney bubble and the fact that you have the free transportation and the safety by staying there it's just unbeaten to me as we have touched upon safety i wanted to give a few tips about how to keep safe as a solo traveler in disney world whilst you're at disney people tend to be very friendly everyone's in a good mood they're in disney so you may strike up conversations with people just be sure to not give out your personal details don't let anyone know your plans or let them know the hotel you are staying in it's always a good idea to kind of just be cautious as you don't know people's intentions if you are going to be posting on social media what i tend to do is wait until i've left somewhere before i post so no one knows exactly where i am at any given time some people who do solo trips actively want to meet up with fellow solo travelers a great way to do this is use these facebook groups that you can find specifically for solo travelers to disney world again just be cautious about the information you give out make sure you're going to meet in popular places and to be fair if you're going to be meeting in the parks that's a really really good option because there's always lots of people around and just go and have fun but keep your senses about you and just be cautious some of the most stressful elements about a solo trip to disney world is actually traveling there so i'm going to cover that now airports can be super stressful places so there's a few things that i would recommend doing to make it a bit easier if you have a very very early flight consider staying in an airport hotel this way you're not having to stress about getting to the airport on time there's normally lots of hotels with different budgets available actually on site at airports now and it just takes a lot of the stress away at the airport itself you might consider doing something like speedy security or booking an airport lounge so it's a bit more of a relaxed way to get around the airport and your experience is not as stressful i also like to look everything up in advance i always check the day of my flight to make sure everything's going ahead as usual and i also look 
up maps of the airport so I can kind of get an idea of the layout, where I might want to eat, things like that. So just when I'm there, I'm a bit more comfortable. I would also highly recommend giving yourself plenty of time. You never know what's gonna happen with traffic delays, things like that. So always give yourself extra time. I would always rather be killing time at the airport than stressing out that I'm gonna miss my flight. Something else I would consider is the amount of luggage you are gonna take. On my last solo trip, I kind of went a bit mad. I had two large suitcases, a small cabin case and a backpack. And it was a bit of a nightmare, let's be honest. <laughs> Once you're in Orlando, of course it's not a problem, but actually when you are walking around the airport trying to get to your hotel, wheeling all these bags around, it was quite difficult. Something that you might want to do is just take one big suitcase with you and a cabin case. And if in Orlando you do happen to buy too much, because you know the merch is incredible. If you're anything like me, you're gonna buy lots of merch. Then what you can always do is purchase a suitcase in Orlando itself and then pay for it on the way home. To get from the airport to your hotel, if you are gonna be landing at Orlando MCO Airport, you can get the Mears Express. This costs around $40 round trip and it will take you to your Disney hotel. It can take a little while because it will stop at multiple stops, but it's rather frequent and it is cheap. So it's a really great option for solo travelers. If you are gonna be staying off site, then you may need to consider a private transfer or a taxi, Uber, Lyft, something like that. These can be quite pricey as a solo traveler. So what I would suggest is downloading both Uber and Lyft, and then you can compare the cheapest price and just go with if it's cheaper. Another option is to hire a car whilst you're in Orlando. This is something I love to do and I tend to do all my trips now. As a solo traveler, this could be really handy because you are just on your own schedule. You're not having to use public transportation. And if you are worried about safety, about being in taxis, etc., on your own, hiring a car can be a really good option. I like to use a website called Florida Discount Car Hire. Here they compare lots of different car rental agencies such as Avis, Hertz, Alamo, and and get you the best prices. Something I really like is you can also add on extra insurance so that you are fully covered and also purchase the hire of a sat nav which they will send to you at your home address in the UK. That you just take it with you and when you come home, they've given you a return envelope and you just send it back to them. Something that I did really like is there is so much signposting to get from the airport to Disney World that even though I had a sat nav, I didn't really need to use it, which is great news. And whilst you are on Disney property, there is tons of signposting too. I found it very easy to get around. It took me maximum maybe 15 minutes to drive anywhere on Disney property, which is fantastic. This is one of the reasons I love hiring a car because it just saves you so much time. The Disney buses and free transportation are fantastic, but they can take a while, so you do need to factor that into your day. Whereas with the car, you have the absolute flexibility to go wherever you want, whenever you want. Now, driving abroad can be a bit nerve wracking because of course you are driving on the other side of the road. The cars are different to what you are used to. And also there's different driving rules. What I would say is go check out some websites in advance of your trip where they will let you know the driving rules that you must know before you go. There are little quirky things that are different such as you can go round the corner when it is a red light as long as there are no other vehicles coming. So it's good to go and check out these websites just so you know you are abiding by the law. The cars are also much bigger than in the UK and they are often automatics. So that could be different. I actually really enjoy driving automatic cars. They're so easy and nice to use but when you first get into them they can be a bit different to turn them on so that's always the biggest hurdle I find is how do I actually start the car some of them will have a button you press that will start the engine sometimes you need to put your foot on the brake before you turn the key or press the button then the car will turn on so it's a bit of trial and error but you'll figure it out I've always found it super simple to use and actually automatics are very very simple to drive and a, a joy really I really love them one of my top tips is when you collect your car is to take a photograph of it. This way you know the make, model and the license plate number which could come in handy because the car parks at Disney are huge so it's very easy to lose your car. So definitely make sure you have that photo so you can easily identify your car when you're trying to find it. Another thing I like to do in the car parks is on my phone I just type a little note of the row that I'm in so I can easily find it at the end of a long park day. And something that I really liked about 
about the car keys in America is they have a little button that when you press it, the car will beep. So if you know you're in the general vicinity of the car, but you don't know exactly where it is, press the little button, your car will let you know, woohoo, over here, and then you can go find it. Something that I use, which I would highly recommend, is the visitor's toll pass. In Orlando itself, there's quite a few toll roads. So to prevent you having to scramble to find change or worry about getting a ticket or a fine for not having paid, you can get the visitor's toll pass. The visitor's toll pass you collect at the airport near the rental company, so it's super easy to collect. You just hang it up on your mirror and you are set to go. The best thing about the visitor's toll pass is you get up to 80% discount on the toll roads, so you get it for super cheap. All I did was I registered in advance on their website. I put $10 onto my toll pass, collected it, put it in my car. At the end of the trip, there is a little post box for you to put it in. And then I didn't actually use $10 worth of toll roads, so they refunded me the difference. Another top tip I have is that a lot of rental companies need you to return the car with a full tank of gas. Now, there are lots of gas stations on site at the airport, but they are more than double the amount of regular gas stations. What I do instead is I come off of the interstate a junction or two before the airport and fill up there. There is a website that gives you a list of all of the different available gas stations very close to the airport, but charging regular prices. So I'll link that in the description down below. When you first get into the hire car as a solo traveler, it can feel a bit nerve wracking because it's all on you. You haven't got a navigator with you. You're learning how to drive on the other side of the road and things like that. But what I would say is America is a country built for driving. The roads are very spacious. The cars are very easy to use. So it, you very quickly settle into it. So I wouldn't panic too much. If you don't fancy driving as soon as you land and perhaps you've had a very long travel day or a landing at night, what you can always do is hire a car on site at Disney for a, the next day or a few days into your trip. That way you've settled in a bit. You can pick the car up in the daytime and you know you're already at Disney so you don't have a very far drive to get anywhere you need to go. If you are coming from abroad as a solo traveler, one thing I would suggest is use jet lag to your advantage. You are typically going to be getting up very, very early in the morning, but this is actually great news. The parks do open quite early, and if you're staying at a Disney World hotel, you do get to go in 30 minutes earlier than everyone else, and this is the best time to visit. The mornings are the quietest time at Disney World. From lunchtime onwards, the parks get busier. It also gets much hotter. So if you go first thing in the morning, you're going to get so much more done. I would suggest going into the parks as early as you can and then getting on those big rides because they're going to have the least amount of wait time then. Because Disney is so big and so tiring, your feet will get very worn out very quickly. So I highly recommend taking breaks. What I like to do is have lunch in the parks and then in the afternoon, go back to the hotel, swim, relax, do activities there, something like that. And it's a good time to do it because in the afternoons, as I say, it is the hottest part of the day. It is the busiest part of the day. So you would just be spending a lot of time queuing in the sun. So instead, go and take a break and then go back out in the evenings for food and into the parks in the evenings. That way you're maximizing your time in the day and you're gonna be more comfortable for it. Orlando is also super, super hot. So it's really important as a solo traveler to keep an eye on yourself and look out for yourself. Make sure you're staying super hydrated. There is nothing worse than feeling unwell or even fainting if you are on your own. Luckily, Disney has water fountains everywhere that are free to use. And if you go to quick service locations, you can get free cups of iced water. You don't even need to be dining there. You can just go in and ask for them, which is fantastic and helps you save a lot of money. The great news is though, everywhere indoors is very well air conditioned. So if you are feeling a little bit warm, a little bit overwhelmed, definitely go into a bar, a restaurant or a shop and just take some time to cool down in the air conditioning. This is another reason why I love having table service meals because it does give me that break in the day. It helps me rest my feet and be in the air conditioning and rehydrate. So it's a really, really great option. Something that can be a concern for people traveling to Disney World are hurricanes. Now, Orlando does have a hurricane season for six months of the year. Now, for me last year when I was in Orlando, there happened to be a hurricane. It was the first time I'd ever had a hurricane experience. And the great news is I was super well looked after. The hotels are all set up to cater for hurricanes. So you are totally safe and they will have provisions in place to keep you inside 
inside your room you'll be able to buy food packages things like that so you don't have to leave your room i was so impressed with how the hurricane was handled now i was actually staying in a universal resort at the time but i know people staying in a disney resort and they had a very similar experience and in fact they even have stuff like characters come to the resort so you can meet them whilst you're confined to your resort which was fantastic so i would say if you are a solo traveler don't worry about hurricane season it would be very unlikely to happen but if it does you're going to be well cared for i didn't feel unsafe at all i was perfectly fine perfectly healthy i was well fed the staff went above and beyond they were fantastic so don't worry about this another thing people ask me a lot is about whether to take cash or card and the great news is you can use either disney world is accepting both after the pandemic it briefly was cashless but they are accepting cash again now i personally love my starling card it's a bank account in the uk but it's all online so there's no physical banks but i like that it is an official bank account because you have all the extra protection that you don't always get with travel cards my styling card i just use it to put all of my holiday money on and then take it with me you use it like you would a normal debit card what i really like is you get notifications every time you spend so it lets you know how much money you've spent in dollars but also pounds you can keep an eye on how much you're spending it has a really really good exchange rate and there are no fees solo trips are actually my personal favorite way to visit disney world i love the freedom it gives you the ability to visit the parks in any way you have ever wanted you can dine wherever you like stay in whatever hotel you like you set the budget the schedule it's just the best i would say if you are considering taking a solo trip then absolutely do it just dive in head first because i don't think you will regret it in fact it may actually become your favorite way to visit disney disney world is such a brilliant destination for solo travelers because the fact that you have so many hotels on site you have free transportation and with so much to see and do you are having a jam-packed holiday there is no time to be worried about being on your own and you don't really notice because the time is flying by there's too much to fit in we don't have enough time and i'm just making the most of my experience i hope this video has been helpful if you are thinking of taking a solo trip and these tips will come in handy for you if you are going to be taking a solo trip then let me know what you're most looking forward to in the comments down below at the end of this video i will link a playlist with videos all about planning trips to walt disney world so definitely go check them out because they will be so helpful in planning your own solo trip thank you so much for watching this video and until next time i hope you have a most magical day Bye bye